Welcome back to Coin Sense and Nonsense. Today, it's the Texas Commemorative Half Dollar. So this is to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Texas independence. And so this is a really cool design. It was a multi-year series. Uh, this is 1934 was the first year of issue. Um, it ran until 1938. The actual anniversary or um, centennial was in 1936. So they released them early to try to generate funding to support the celebration of the centennial. And it didn't really go all that well. So the first year of minting, um, they uh, cranked out 205,113 of these, all out of the Philadelphia Mint. And the problem was uh, not all that many sold. So kind of on the order of 61,000 or so sold and were given away and whatnot. So um, they had a problem to continue on. The Mint wasn't too happy and they said, hey, or the Treasury actually, uh, kind of said, you gotta pay up. If we're gonna continue to mint these for a couple more years, you better pay us for what you what we've minted so far that's not sold. So they melted a ton of these, like 70% of the mintage was melted. And so this I thought was kind of a cool one. Um, it's not a high grade, it's uh, MS-63. It's kind of like, you know, a little below the desirability window for some commemoratives, but I thought the luster looked pretty good and the deal was halfway decent. So I went for it anyway. The the uh, 1936 is really what I want. Actually, this is really what you came for. <laughs> this is the reverse of this. I normally I collect commemoratives that have nautical themes or ships, and this kind of breaks that mold. I don't have. There's none here, but Winged Victory on this reverse is just awesome. And that is Sam Houston and Steve Austin. Stephen Austin. Pardon me. No relation, I think, to the $6 million man. Um, so, um, Victory has her arm on the Alamo. And there are six flags in the background there. Where it says Liberty, up top. So... Very, very cool design. So, mintage dropped significantly. Uh, 1935 and 36, uh, 10,000 each from Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. I don't know if I said it already, but in 1934, only uh, Philadelphia got in the game for minting. Um, in 19, uh, yeah, like I say, 35 and 36, it was 10,000 each. And then in uh, 37, it dropped to 8,000 each. And in 38, it was 5,000 each. Um, in the final year of issue, these cost $2 a piece. Uh, you could buy a set for $6. There really wasn't a discount. The mint was already knowing how to screw you over back then. So uh, these are designed by Pompeo Capini. He was a Texas sculptor. And what was interesting or kind of controversial about this one, uh, there were a couple things actually. Um, the eagle on the obverse, this was one of the first times ever, or if not the first time ever, that the eagle appeared on the obverse of a U.S. coin. So that kind of raised some eyebrows. And the other thing was this awesome reverse. Some people criticized it as being overly busy. Um, I think it's, it's just awesome. And of course, you know, sales dwindled each year. Collectors got kind of weary. So that was one of the things uh, I think kind of contributed to the downfall of commemorative uh, offerings it, during this time. Uh, too many of these series went um, for multiple years and collectors, you know, just didn't want to be fleeced for the, <laughs> just to have a different year on the same design. So. 
Um, there were some oddities. I'll just go through real quick some of my favorite uh, collect uh, commemorative stories there. These two guys here on the Huguenot half dollar weren't even instrumental or around. They died in the 1500s and don't know why they're being honored on this one. So that's kind of bizarre. And this Alabama uh, 1921 half dollar celebrating the centennial of the statehood of Alabama which was in 1919, so two years late. Hello. This one is notable also because that's the first time ever a living person has been depicted on a U.S. coin. So, Kilby. I think he was the governor or something at the time. So, anyway, um, this is a really cool coin. Happy to have it. Um, got a decent deal, like I say. I will try to eventually add uh, the 1936 and also maybe a 1938 since they are the more um, rare. I'm that way. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed checking this out and uh, I'll put some values up and uh, well, actually, let me just tell you, this is like a $165 value coin. I didn't pay, pay that for it. It was cheaper, obviously. Um, so MS-65 uh, for this year is about $225. The top pop on this is MS-68 Plus, at least from PCGS, <clears throat> pardon me. And that is a beautiful coin. Here's a pic of that. And yeah, you can see that, that you, why it got a plus. So that's a $20,000 coin though, so that is nuts. So, um, and then of course, as the mintages dropped on these in subsequent years, the values um, go up accordingly. So, uh, the 1938 and the same grade is uh, 225 or 275 dollars, something like that. So, anyway, thanks so much for watching Coin Sense and Nonsense, and until next time, bye bye.